A new poll says the mood across Alberta and much of Canada is changing as the weather gets warmer, COVID-19 cases drop, and more people are being vaccinated. To discuss this in more detail is Toronto Sun columnist and one of our regular contributors, Mr. Brian Lilly. Now, Brian, here in Alberta, we've launched into stage one of a reopening plan, which includes patios, back out on the deck again, enjoying a nice cold one, a nice sandwich. Uh, we can also get our haircut once again, but by appointment only. And stage two here in Alberta should take place in a couple of weeks. But it's a little different scenario where you are in Ontario. Yeah, most lockdown place in uh, North America. We haven't been able to get legal haircuts since the fall. I'm thinking late October, early November. So it's all it's the a long market? time, How It's the black market haircuts uh, right now? It's a lot of black market or, you know, doing the home job with the clippers, you know. <laughs> it's uh, it, it's not been easy. Uh, can't get haircuts, can't go to restaurants. There's takeout. We now have something that uh, my boss coined the term for it, walktails. Uh, people are, uh, bars and restaurants are serving cocktails and beer to go, and people are grabbing them and walking down the street with them, heading off to the park and having a drink with friends or having a meal with friends because, you know, we're social creatures. We need to socialize. Things are still pretty tight here, and I'm not sure that it's going to go as quickly as you guys are. Saskatchewan is moving uh, further ahead. Of course, most of the places we're talking about, BC, Alberta, Sask, we're not as locked down as Ontario is. You know, Manitoba, I understand they're going through a, a big surge again. We're not. Our numbers are, are coming down, but still going very slow. You know, I was watching the, the Leafs-Habs game the other night. In Game 7, when the Leafs, <coughs> they just had a big choking incident with 500 healthcare workers watching on. Those healthcare workers had to be double vaccinated in order to get in. And they were chosen by their local hospitals. Now, compare that to Montreal. You just buy a ticket if you could afford it. And they had 2,500 people in the stands. As there's just 500 healthcare workers watching in Toronto, they're showing people sitting in bars, jumping up and down, hugging, screaming as the Habs are winning. It's very different depending on where you live in Canada right now. Do you think it was really important for Doug Ford to have the healthcare workers at the game in case the Leafs were choking? I mean, it's good to have you know healthcare professionals. <laughs> that, that 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 has been the joke. I, I will say this uh, for uh, for the premier, um, you know, he wanted fans in the stands one way or another. The only way that public health officials would give the green light for it, and they've got incredible powers here in Ontario, different than other parts of the country. The only way they would allow it was double vaccinated, no more than 550. I mean. The Leafs tried to put out beer and pizza for them, and the public health officials tried to shut down the beer and said, no, 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 you're only allowed water. Someone higher up wisely stepped in and said, no, let them have a beer. Brian, the World Health Organization has given new names to the variants of COVID-19 to stop places from being stigmatized like the India variant. Now, what are we supposed to call them? Uh, alpha, Beta, Delta, Epsilon. If it sounds like you're joining a frat, that's because you are. You know, I thought of Animal House when I first uh, heard about this. Are we all going to join Delta, Epsilon and spend seven years in college without getting a degree? Um, the, I, I can't believe that they've done this because, you know, when all this started, we were told, well, you can't call it uh, the Wuhan coronavirus. You can't call, you know, say anything related to China or Wuhan in the name of this virus. That's not how we do it, I heard many people say on the media. Really? Uh, tell that to the West Nile virus. Tell that to Lyme disease, named after Lyme, Connecticut. Uh, tell that to Zika virus. Tell that to so many of the diseases that we have. They're named after where they were first noticed, discovered, what have you. So we weren't allowed to call it Wuhan. We weren't allowed to call it China. Then we had a variant from the United Kingdom. Suddenly it was fine to call it the UK variant or the Kent variant, and nobody batted an eye. There were no memos in newsrooms. There were no, you know, you're being racist claims by politicians until the Indian variant showed up. And then they said, well, you can't call it that. So look, if we're going to call it, I, I believe the Indian variant is being called Epsilon. That's easier to rem remember than B.1.617. And then you have to add on dot one dot two dot two a depending on which subvariant it is. I'll take that, but it is a little ridiculous that this is what our health officials are concerned about, as opposed to actual sick people. The federal government looks like they're set to drop the COVID-19 hotel quarantine. Now this comes as an expert panel on testing and screening made the recommendation, but Brian, you say the same report shows other problems that Trudeau Liberals will not fix. 
Yeah, so look, they, they looked at the hotel quarantine and they said, it doesn't make sense that you've got one rule for the land border. You drive across, let's say, you walk across, you take a cab across. We've all heard these stories. It doesn't make sense that if you come across the land border, you can just quarantine at home. But if you fly in, you've got to spend up to three days at a hotel. And I say up to because as soon as you get a negative PCR test, you're allowed to go. That could be 12 hours later. Uh, but you're still charged $2,000. They said, it doesn't make sense. So we either go the route of Australia and New Zealand and you spend two full weeks when you come into the country in a government mandated hotel, or we just change it so that everyone has to quarantine at home. But here's what they said, Hal. They said a couple of things, that border officials should be ensuring that there is a suitable quarantine plan. Now, suitable means that you're able to distance from other people in your home. If you have a small apartment with five people, you can't socially distance. If you've got a big home with 15 people, you can't socially distance. It's not going to work. These are things that are happening, and that's how we get these new variants come in, and then they're spread. The other thing they found, that second test done on day eight or day 10, depending, only a third of air travelers at the beginning, or sorry, uh, two thirds were doing it, one third were not submitting their second test. We know that about 27 to 30 percent of COVID positive passengers don't test positive until that second test. That's why it's important to have quarantine and have proper testing. The premiers have been screaming about this. The federal government won't do anything. Now their own expert panel says you got to fix it and they're not doing it. Brian, Conservative leader Aaron O'Toole is calling for an investigation into the ties between the Chinese government, Chinese military, and our National Microbiology Lab in Winnipeg. What do you think is driving this? Well, what's driving it is that the government's being very tight-lipped. If you remember, it was uh, about two years ago that uh, uh, scientists from the National Microbiology Lab were marched out, along with several students who were des described in media reports at the time as Chinese students that they were taken out and these two scientists, one a doctor, one a, a micro, a, a biologist saying, you know what, you, you've got to get out of here. They were fired earlier this year after evidence presented by CSIS said that these people are a security threat. So here's a couple things that we do know. We know that they worked with several researchers from China. That's not a problem, Hal, and that should not set off alarms for anyone, especially if you're studying the type of respiratory viruses like SARS-CoV-2 that results in COVID-19. Because we know that there's a good chance that these viruses, based on history of the last several decades, will emanate out of China, just like SARS did, just like MERS did, just like COVID-19 did. So everyone's trying to work with China, but we had people with ties to the People's Liberation Army Academy of Medical uh, Sciences working in the lab that you need secret clearance for secret clearance that we don't give to many of our own researchers, that many in our military would not have access to this type of lab. And we gave that access to a researcher from the People's Liberation Army of China medical team. That, you know, we should know more about that. We should know more about the people that were fired and why they were fired, and the government won't say anything. So far, all they've been doing is turning around and saying, well, you're racist if you ask about this. And Brian, the Prime Minister was at the receiving end of a lecture from Conservative MPs of Asian descent who took issue with his claim that the Tories were guilty of anti-Asian racism. What happened there? Oh, so th this was uh, incredible to watch. So it was uh, uh, last week on Wednesday, uh, the Prime Minister was up in the House of Commons and asking questions or uh, answering questions. Right. And Aaron O'Toole had asked about it. And, you know, and then conservative backbenchers started asking. And eventually Trudeau got irritated. And it started off in French first with uh, conservative MP Pierre Paul Huss, then uh, Michael Barrett, and then Candace Bergen. And he accused each of them of stoking anti Asian racism. Well, the next day, Michael Chong, uh, uh, Kenny Shu and Nellie Shin all got together and said, you know what, this is garbage. Um, uh, Kenny Chu actually uh, described the PM in his statement in the House of Commons. He said he didn't want to take lessons from brownface, blackface. Um, and he slammed the prime minister. They issued a statement. They each made statements or asked questions in the House. And Nellie Shin, uh, who was, you know, Michael Chan's born here of both Chinese and Dutch parents, uh, both immigrants to Canada. 
Uh, Kenny Chu immigrated as a teenager. Nelly Shen, she came as a child from Korea. And they're all saying, look, you've never experienced anti-Asian racism. We have, and you're making it, you're cheapening what's really happening by making this claim. Don't do this. And by the way, these are serious questions. They deserve serious answers. I applaud them for doing that because the prime minister throws around the racist card as soon as he's in trouble, even when it's not warranted. Most of the time, it's not warranted. Now, you wrote a couple of months ago about anti-racism training the Trudeau government was putting executives at Global Affairs through. What took place with that training, and do you know the cost involved? Uh, we know the cost involved now, but to remind people what was going on, this was the training that told executives that, um, well, only white people can be racist, described... Uh, it used the term, this place we now call Canada, a bit strange for the government of Canada, to have training that says this place we now call Canada, um, saying Canada is built on all kinds of myths. It, look, it may be, and we can have a discussion, but it, it was very bizarre training that said markers of white supremacy include objectivism. So being objective means that you are white supremacist. Um, having a sense of urgency is a sign of white supremacy. Come on, hurry up, we gotta go. We're gonna miss the train. That's apparently white supremacy. Uh, all of these things, uh, perfectionism, individualism. Uh, it, it declared that Thanksgiving was racist. It declared, rightly so, that wearing blackface is racist, but I'm not sure they told the prime minister that. But, oh, by the way, we found out it cost $148,000, Al, to put just shy of 400 people through the cost isn't that big, but given what's in the material, I'd say we were definitely ripped off. Brian, the Aaron O'Toole Conservatives have joined with politicians from the UK, Australia, and New Zealand to put forth a trading block of English-speaking Democratic allies. But so far, Canada can't even get a deal with the UK and has something to do with British cheese? <laughs> so uh, I think this Kanzuk idea is a great one. And Aaron O'Toole's been championing it for many years. So is his foreign affairs critic that we just spoke of, Michael Chong. Uh, these guys say, look, let's, let's put together a trading block. Why aren't we trading with the United Kingdom, with New Zealand, with Australia, thus Kanzuk? And some people even add the United States in there. Uh, the Americans so far have not signed on to this letter. But you know, over the weekend, Boris Johnson's doing an interview and he's asked about a trade deal with Canada. We only have a tentative trade deal with the UK since they've left Europe, and we can't get a permanent one, Boris Johnson says, because Justin Trudeau's afraid of British cheese. Uh, he doesn't want to upset the Quebec dairy farmers, which is the core of the, the dairy industry. I know that we have um, supply management farmers in every province of the country. I'm going to hear from them now that I've said that. But he is really worried about the Quebec dairy farmers. Boris Johnson in the UK... They have their own dairy industry. They want to sell us lots of cheddar, you know, and our guys are saying we don't want the competition. The Trudeau liberals also are not overly keen on doing trade deals with places like Britain. So I doubt that this is going to go forward until we change government. But I think it's a great idea. We used to do an awful lot of trade with Britain until the Suez crisis, until Lester Pearson. And uh, since then, things have been going downhill. We should uh, start working with countries that have similar trading systems and environmental conditions and all the other things. Why trade uh, have free trade deals with places that have much lower standards than we do instead of trading with places that have similar standards? Toronto Sun columnist and one of our regular contributors, Brian Lilly, thanks so much for your time today. Thank you, Hal.